Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another How to Draw video. This is the latest of my How to Draw Animals video series. I will put a uh, link to the playlist. We've got more than 20 something uh, videos in this series. I've put a square here as I usually do for these videos. It is four inches on all sides. That works out to just a little bit over 10 centimeters. And then of course I've divided it right across the middle. Now one thing I'm gonna do that's a little bit unusual is I'm gonna further divide this uh, square, this lower right hand square, I'll do that in time lapse and then come back to explain why I'm doing that. So yeah, the reason I'm doing that is that the facial features of this dog are all um, compacted within this area and to help you with placing the eyes, the nose later on, uh, it'll be helpful to have that further subdivision right there. But let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna draw a shape of uh, one of the ears and then a very big loop for the top of the head. All right, so you see the ear points right to the corner, so that helps you sort of with placing these lines. And then in terms of getting this uh, curvature of the top of the head where you want it to be, just pay attention to where those uh, lines intersect, each one of these uh, sort of crossbar lines in the middle. Uh, let's go ahead now and draw uh, the other ear, uh, as well as a very simple line for the bottom of the jaw. All right, so here's the other ear. You see that it doesn't quite reach uh, to that corner. This is a three-quarter point of view, and so this ear appears a little bit smaller uh, in our drawing. And uh, to be honest, this shape of the lower part of the jaw is just very, very generalized. It's hard to come up with good guidelines for a Yorkie because the fur is all over the place. Uh, and you're sort of forced to simplify things in a slightly comical way. I'm going to zoom in now to this area for the placement of the eyes, nose, and mouth. So, as I said, a little bit silly looking, but uh, believe it or not, this is going to help us to get a good drawing later on. If you notice that this eye, this sort of almond-shaped eye, is very nearly touching the, the horizontal line there. This one turned away from us. The shape of it is sort of going to be obscured by the um, bridge of the nose there and the kind of fur that's coming out. The uh, nose, observe the relative size of the nose compared to the eye. A little bit larger, again touching this uh, crossbar line right here uh, and sort of midway between the two vertical lines. And then this again, the, the very generalized line for the mouth. Don't worry too much about the placement of that, but that's about where we're going to see the sort of dark shadowy area of the mouth later on. I'm going to pull back, I'm going to add just two basic lines here that are for the uh, sides of the neck. Uh, and then we're going to be able to get into some real-time drawing. All right, so we got the basic guidelines in place. What I'm going to do is just in time lapse erase all of those initial boxy guidelines, and then we can finally start getting into the details. All right, so let's begin by refining uh, the shape of this ear over here, as is often the case with uh, different breeds of dogs and cats as well. I believe is the, you know it sort of looks triangular, but um, actually it might have a slightly more complicated. Uh, contour than that. At least this is what I saw in different photos. Now the big challenge of drawing a Yorkshire Corgi, Corgi? <laughs> a Yorkshire Terrier, of course I own a Corgi so <laughs> I'm inventing new breeds here as I draw, uh, is the fur and the fur is very fluffy and this is part of what makes the dog adorable uh, but you as an artist have to figure out the direction uh, sort of directional flow of that fur. Now one section here that is a, um, a, a big characteristic of the Yorkie is this area in what we would think of as the eyebrows. Uh, and that's part of what really gives the uh, Yorkie an interesting character. This big fluffy area above each eye and you can see that I'm sort of mapping out the direction that each one of these um, areas you know where the lines are going to be flowing and uh, I'm not too worried about the details of individual uh, tufts of fur at this stage just kind of trying to figure out the um, the basic direction over here it's gonna you know little by little split and then start to head over in the other direction uh, and because the dog's head is turned away from us a little bit, all of this just gets slightly reduced in size. But uh, you pay, try to pay attention to, you know, 
fanning out the limes so that they uh, are puffing up from the head in, in a natural way. And again, we're going to be adding considerable more detail in this area. Now, one thing I noticed as I studied photographs was that uh, here on the sort of snout, the sort of bridge of the nose, there is almost like a sort of wave-like shape, sort of reminds me of an ocean wave uh, of the fur going up, sort of curving in as it flows up into this other area. So that's something you can get into your drawing. Um, a lot of dog breeds uh, and, you know, lions and tigers and stuff have very short hair across the area of the uh, bridge of the nose, but that does not seem to be the case for a Yorkshire Terrier. Plenty of long, fluffy uh, fur in this area. And again, you're going to start figuring out a directional flow here. I would say you're getting something that looks a little bit like a bushy mustache almost in this area uh, and it sort of connects with that bridge of the nose area that we started with again always trying to pay attention to the directional flow of these uh, furry lines then in the uh, area of what we would I guess is the upper lip you want to start curving in the opposite direction see all these lines are curving this way the lines begin to flip around and curve in the opposite direction here. And then this line, this sort of simplistically rounded area, uh, I'm going to start to alter that into a little more of this sort of bushy mustache shape that I was talking about earlier. And then the whole area of the chin also is, you know, largely obscured by the fluffiness of the fur. That's why I think what makes this dog breed so adorable is that it's just everywhere you look you see fluffy fur uh, and uh, there's basically no area of the face that I can see where the the hairs are short. It's just varying degrees of long. Long and longer <laughs> basically. Uh, but notice how you could have this line almost connect with the eye, so like that the shape of the eye is being determined by the uh, the fur that's flopping up in front of it. And I suppose the same, same goes for this eye over here to a lesser extent. Now when you get underneath this big bushy eyebrow area, the uh, directional flow of the lines is going to kind of go in the opposite direction, kind of spread flowing out from the eye. And, you know, we're going to add more detail in the area of the eye later on. I'll probably zoom in at that stage. And all across here, I'm going to go ahead and just sort of erase this initial guideline because it's all going to get replaced with lovely, cute, fluffy fur. Again, thinking a little bit about the uh, direction of these lines. And as we refine things later on, we're going to try not to have the, the fur be too perfect. You know, one thing I noticed as I studied uh, the photos of the Yorkies is that, you know, you would have uh, every once in a while a piece of unruly fur that was maybe flopping in the slightly opposite direction or something like that that uh, it's part of what makes these dogs adorable is that the hair is not super perfect looking. And then uh, what I'm going to be doing in the area of the ear is employing a kind of two-part system for uh, shading in that fluffy fur. But before we get to that, let's go ahead and take the, these guidelines and start to add a little more fluff to them. I suppose the ears are the one point, the very tips of the ears, that's the one area where the, the fur gets a little shorter. So I stand corrected by myself <laughs> in terms of what I said earlier of there being no short uh, hairs on the Yorkie. I think in the, just in the tips of the ears it gets a little shorter anyway. And basically that's going to give us what we need for the um, mapping out our directional flow of the lines. Um, some of the 
fur here is going to be coming from the interior of the ear, which is very common among dogs and cats. So maybe I'll get in a little indication of that here. And then, of course, when you get down to the area of the body, that also you're going to be breaking those lines into areas of fur. Now, there's typically a sort of white, an area of white fur here underneath the, the jaw or the chin that is, um, again, in a slightly unruly way, uh, flowing out to the left and then to the right. So, again, I'm going to sort of erase that initial guideline so as to uh, indicate the other area of this, what will eventually be white compared to some of the other parts of the drawing. Well, how about if I go ahead and shift focus, we're going to zoom in and start working on the eyes and the nose. All right, so as I said, this slightly almond-shaped, uh, uh, or maybe lemon <laughs> shape to the eye here. I'm going to rope off a little area here that's going to be an area of highlight. Maybe the dog is staring out the window at a squirrel, <laughs> getting ready to give chase, or at least do some serious yapping. Uh, and I'm also putting in a little lower area of highlight right here at the bottom um, to sort of uh, indicate the moisture, I suppose, that collects in that area. And I'm just going to go ahead and darken this, darken this whole area. And one interesting thing about the Yorkie's eyes is that you don't normally see the whites of the eyes at all. Uh, and so you end up with this really kind of cute um, beady black eye that uh, I suppose is slightly unusual among dog breeds. And we're going to do the same thing over here. As I said, sort of rope off a little area of shimmering light and then darken in the rest. Now we can get into refining the shape of the nose. It's interesting, a lot of uh, animal breeds have a similar uh, kind of shape to the nose, I've noticed. Uh, as I've drawn more and more different kinds of animals. First of all, let's begin by sort of doing a vertical line here to remind ourselves of where the, the dead center of this nose is as it is curving away from us. And then think in terms of a nostril right here that is not simply a dot, but a um, almost apostrophe shape as it curves back into the other edge of uh, the nose. I think I need to bring this just a little closer to that central line. And the truth is this central line is not visible all the way to the tip of the nose. It's more visible about halfway up. And because the nose is turned away from us, we're not going to see that other nostril nearly so much. It's sort of compressed and, and uh, the real shape of the nose divides into two parts here, the contour just because of how it's turned. And then I'm going to go ahead and darken in, especially over here, in a fairly bold way, the side and a little bit across the top. I'm going to leave this area largely unshaded because that is going to be the sort of shimmering shine of a healthy dog. You know a dog should have a good shiny nose if it's healthy. And just darkening in more and more here on this other side of the nose. A lot of this I'm going to come back with my uh, trusty black Prismacolor, black colored pencil, late in the game of this video and, and intensify the contrast. But I noticed that uh, a, a little bit of the darkness of the nose seems to almost extend into the fur. And again, it's helpful if you ha have already prepared what the directional flow is. Uh, so that if you begin shading this in this area. And as for the mouth, you know, the way I've drawn it makes it look like a line, but the truth is it's, it's mostly fur that you're looking at. I guess if you're going to call this the sort of mustache area. Um, you've got white fur that's coming down here, and then just, uh, you don't necessarily see the mouth, but you see some shading beneath that uh, fur that helps you understand what's going on there. And I can think you can see we're already getting, uh, you know, we're getting away from that slightly cartoony, simplistic look of the uh, basic guidelines and getting something closer to a um, 
finished drawing of a real Yorkie. Um, I'll go ahead and add just a little more shading here to like this fur. I think what I saw when the dog is turned away from us like this is that you get the two different areas, so sort of like the chin fur here, and then this, uh, again, if we're going to call this the sort of bushy, bushy mustache, that that's what you've got going on over here. Well, let's go ahead and pull back with the focus um, because we're going to get into um, really trying to fill out the look of the fur and that involves a kind of, in many cases, a, a sort of a two-part uh, effort of shading and then erasing away. And uh, I'll tell you, it'll be very helpful if you have a brand new eraser uh, for this next part because you're going to almost use the eraser as a drawing tool for doing white uh, tufts of fur. So let's go ahead and refocus and get into that. All right, so I've pulled back, but not all the way back. I want to get still be close enough for you to see some of the details of what I'm doing. And in an almost reckless way, I'm just going to go in here and add quite a lot of shading. I'm holding my pencil quite low uh, to the surface of the paper. That exposes more of the lead and allows me to get um, shading, like a gray tone, rather than lines, uh, because I really don't want individual lines in this area right now. I'm, I'm really just looking for what I would call an erasable tone. Uh, getting some good shading in here. As we saw from the eye, the highlight on the eye indicates that the light is coming from the right hand side of uh, the page and so that means that this uh, left hand side of the page is the light can't reach over there and it ends up getting filled with shading. Um, and you can, as I said, almost recklessly, I don't have to worry too much about creating great beauty at this stage. I'm just sort of mapping out the areas where the light can't reach. And as you can see, it's primarily over here to the left of the uh, eyebrow, the bushy eyebrow and the bushy mustache area. And once we've got a fair amount of that, I'm, I'm kind of building it up so that when I try to erase, um, there will be contrast. That the eraser will, as I said, become kind of like a drawing tool that allows me to um, draw almost with the eraser, draw some white fur. Uh, now you could also do this with white gouache, my beloved white gouache, but uh, fairly tricky, I would say, to do line after line with a brush and white paint. You've got to have the white paint at just the right consistency. So I thought instead of that approach, I would show how we can do it with the eraser. So now that I've got all that in place, fairly dark, and we'll be darkening it, darkening it even more, I'm going to come in with my uh, eraser and start trying to erase away certain areas of where the uh, fur is, you know, popping in front of that darkened area. And as I said, if you have a brand new eraser, then you're going to, the eraser has that sort of sharp, crisp edge to it, at least for a while it does. And then you can uh, get these lines in there. So I think you can see I'm starting to get a little bit of an effect here. It's not quite as contrasty as I would like, and that probably means I'm going to have to go back in with further shading, and even at the end with uh, black colored Prismacolor uh, to uh, accentuate the contrast between the fur area and the shade behind the fur area. But you can do more of that here in the the mustachial region. I'm going to call it the mustachial region. <laughs> I'm sure the dog breeders use that, that exact same terminology. Uh, but you could get a little bit of fur back here where maybe the light is able to partially reach. Um, one interesting thing to me about a, a, a Yorkshire uh, Terrier is that it, it's adorable, of course, but it also, to me, has this kind of dignified look. Maybe because I, I'm thinking of, like, 
a mustached, <laughs> dignified dog. Wonder if anyone else has that. Maybe it's just me. But you can see me again using the um, eraser as a, a drawing tool almost to get some of this uh, fur in here. And I think we could do if I had a, a little more shading. Well, I'm, I'm getting outside of the realm of the actual frame of the video, so I better not get into that. But we, I'm going to do a similar thing down in the area of the neck. And that might be about enough uh, um, of that kind of stuff. I suppose I can begin to show you how I'm probably going to go back in. And this requires more control. And I'm not keeping the lead low to the uh, paper. I'm giving it sort of a vertical uh, tilt so as to get precision. And I'm filling in those little interstitial spaces between the lines that I created with my uh, eraser. Tricky stuff requires patience and control, but if you do have patience you'll be rewarded with uh, the illusion of white uh, fur. And I think that's probably getting us toward the end of my real-time drawing section. I'm going to kick it into time-lapse. I'm going to do a lot more shading. I'm going to bring out my trusty black Prismacolor, which is going to allow me to really beef up the contrast. I'll just show you real quickly how much darker it can get when you're using a black uh, colored pencil. See that? You can really go to jet black, and that's the advantage of what I call the two-pencil method. Uh, having that black um, Prismacolor, doesn't have to be a Prismacolor, a black uh, colored pencil to really push uh, the contrast. Anyway, I'm going to pull back uh, the focus so that we see the entire drawing. I'm going to do a lot of shading and time lapse and then I'll be back with a few final words. Alright, well as usual I zipped through a lot of stuff in time lapse there. One thing I wanted to point out was that uh, I should have talked a little more about this area around the eyes. There is this dark area of fur um, above and below the eyes. That's worth paying attention to uh, as you follow along with what you saw me doing there in uh, time lapse. As always, it's so much about patience, you know. The longer you are willing to um, take your time with adding lines, adding shading, and uh, in this case sort of erasing away to make uh, little tufts of fur here and there, uh, the more patience you have, the more you will be rewarded with a good-looking drawing of a cute sweet, adorable little Yorkie. Um, but before I go, I always like to say thank you to anyone who has supported me by getting any of my books, like The Two Pencil Method. That's got a whole section on drawing animals. Uh, the Drawing Lesson, a, a graphic novel that teaches you how to draw. And, of course, the Mastering Manga Series 1, 2, and 3. I am always so very grateful to anyone who supports me by ordering any of those books. But let's go ahead and lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back with another one real soon. <laughs>